Well, good morning and uh, welcome to our uh, service of worship this morning. Wherever you are, how, however you feel this morning, now is the time that you have set aside for worship. Uh, in today's scripture, uh, which Richard will unpack for us in a, in a short while, one verse stands out. God, who said, let light shine out of the darkness, made his light shine in our hearts. So let's begin by lighting four candles, four Advent candles, as this is the fourth Sunday of Advent. And let's say the Advent prayer together. Lord Jesus, light of the world, thank you for Gabriel, for Mary, responding to your call. Bless your church, preparing for Christmas, and bless us, your children, who long for your coming. Amen. Now, of course, uh, these candles are only a, a representation of the light God shines in our heart, into our very inner being. And I wonder, are you prepared this morning to enter a time of worship, to, to worship uh, from your inner being? Will you open up yourself? Will you give it up to God? Give him his worth. Worship him with all your heart. You know, Scripture says God's promise is to respond with new light, new knowledge, new understanding, new hope. So let's pray as we begin our worship this morning. Father, your word says that Christ came as light into the darkness, and the darkness could not overcome it. This morning, we offer our own darkness, our own fears to you. We offer them to you, whatever they are, and we simply ask that you give each of us your light as we worship and wait on you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. So come, now is the time to worship.
Our reading this morning is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 5 to 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 5 to 7. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Thank you, Chris. A very good morning to you, whether you're here in church or joining us online this morning. Uh, before we start, let's just bow our heads and pray a moment. Father, thank you for the riches of your word. Thank you that you delight and choose to reveal yourself to us. And so, Lord, we pray that you would speak to our hearts and minds now. We would know your presence here with us as you reveal more of yourself from your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm going to invite you for a few minutes to leave the gloom of a winter's morning and join me on a journey uh, jumping across time and space, rather like Doctor Who's TARDIS. And like the TARDIS, which has that small exterior but uh, reveals an enormous space within, I think we're going to see that these small few verses unpack an enormous sweep of God's purposes across history and time. And it's going to be a journey about light. And it's going to start from the beginning of time and through this crucial time point of Christmas, which we're in, and move right on to the impact on our lives today. So, do you have your seatbelts on? We're going to launch off from verse 6 of our reading, which starts off like this. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light to shine, and so on. And so we're going to travel right back to the creation of the universe, the beginning of time, the beginning of the book of the Bible, in the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and empty, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. The light he called day and the dark he called night. And there was evening and there was morning. Day one. Creation lights up. And the Bible writers use this word light in various, various ways from the the meaning of the physical rays of light that we see with our eyes, to the things that we can't see, for blessing, for joy, for God's presence and favor, for God's holiness and what's right, for the light of guidance, for the way he reveals things to us. And those meanings may overlap. Uh, John, in his first letter, writes, God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. I'm sure John's thinking of dazzling, radiant brightness, but also of the holiness and the purity of God. But here at the beginning, let there be light. Light represents physical light for sure, but also the light of life. Because all that follows in this creation story, all the living creatures are dependent upon light for their life. And I think of this like a, a darkened theatre. And the stage lights come on and the action starts. 
or, or I think of a football ground in darkness and the floodlights come on and the game starts and the crowd buzzes with excitement. The light brings life. God said, let there be light. Well, we're going to take a jump forward in time now to Israel in the time of King David and some of the Psalms. And we see that light is used to indicate God's presence and favor. The light of God's face, the psalmist speaks of. Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. And they come too to speak of God's truth and God's words as like light revealing to us and guiding us in right paths. As Psalm 119, your word is a light to my path. Like in ancient days, a lighthouse with a bright light will be over a port, guiding the ships to port in darkness. We're going to jump on again a few hundred years to the prophet Isaiah. The word of light can guide us, but the prophet reveals that we need more. We need God's light lived out among us, and we need his light within. I happened to be driving back from Stevenage at gone midnight recently, and the distant light of a street light far off wasn't enough. I needed to have light myself. I needed to have my own light, the light of my headlight. And we need light within, our hearts changing by a saviour who will be God's light coming into the world. A light not just for Israel, but for the whole world. And so Isaiah prophesies that there will be a one to come. He says, I will make you a light to the Gentiles. And Isaiah prophesies to his people of this one who will come in, in the future, he says, chapter 60, arise, for your light has come. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And so it is that we're going to jump on several more hundred years to Bethlehem and to a life lived in Nazareth. These prophecies are fulfilled in Jesus, coming into our creation. He is the light of life for all people. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. The writer of the Hebrews says, he is the radiance of the Father's glory and the exact representation of his being. So in Jesus, God's very essence, his being comes among us. His fullness of light and life to dwell in our world to save us. Light made person in our world. The light of the world that goes to the cross in the place of the darkness of our humanity. That we can be saved and share this light. That our hearts are changed. And we too have this light within as we trust in him. And so it is that Jesus can go on to say to his disciples, you are the light of the world. Let your light so shine. And Peter says, uh, says of his people, God who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. And Paul says, once you were darkness, now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. Walk in the light. And now we're going to take a short hop forward in time, just 20, 25 years or so, forward from Jesus and arrive at Paul, writing his letter, second letter to the Corinthian church and our Bible reading that we had read out earlier. And we're going to go back to that verse 6 that we started with and complete the verse. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light to shine in our hearts, to give us 
the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. This then is the story that Paul is alluding to. This one verse unpacks this story from the start of creation, let there be light, to the coming of Jesus at this Christmas season that we celebrate his light into our world, through to us now God shining his light into our hearts. And for Paul, this is what he's devoting his life to. He puts this verse in to explain what he said in the previous verse, which goes like this. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. It explains why Paul is going through hardship, going around the Mediterranean world, preaching Jesus. Not because it's the latest fad or a great theory. No, he's preaching Jesus because he is at the heart of this story that makes sense of the whole of creation from that earliest days of the God who created us. And it enables us to share in the light and wonder of God's presence the God who said at the start of creation, let there be light. The God who created us human beings to share in the light of his love, of his very being. But in the verse following, there's a strange kind of, of but. Paul goes on to say, but we have this treasure in jars of clay, to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Or as another good translation puts it, we now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that the great power is from God and not from us. We have this marvelous treasure of God's light, he says. But we aren't perfect. We aren't invulnerable superheroes. We have this treasure, this shining light in clay jars. And those clay jars in those days would have been the basic, rough, unglamorous, fragile domestic vessels. Nothing fancy. Paul goes on to tell how he's pressed by troubles, how he's perplexed but not despairing, how he gets knocked down but continues. He has physical weakness and mental strains, a clay jar. But Paul is so motivated by this saga of light, its life-changing and eternal impact, and the power of God drawing him on to share this good news. So our final jump through time and space is from there, through all the years, to us here today. Seeing this good news that Paul is sharing spread and spread through time and space until it reaches you and me. And we take our part in this story from the start of creation. We share in the truth of this verse, that God who said, let light shine out of darkness, makes his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of, of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. And as today's disciples, we inherit those words that Jesus spoke to his first disciples, you are the light of the world. And I suggest this should take us to a place of awe and wonder and worship for what God has done. As we celebrate at this time of year that Jesus came as light into our world. And also move us to a place of grateful humility. That in his grace God places us in this story and makes his light shine in our hearts through Jesus Christ.
But further than that, I think this passage from Corinthians leads us on to two areas of practical implications for us. And firstly, for Paul, it wasn't just wonder, but it led him on to his must-do activity of preaching Jesus, of sharing this news by preaching the word and the example of the lifestyle that he lived for those new churches that he started. We're not apostles like Paul, but we too have this treasure. And it reminds us that we too are called to share something of this good news, the love, the light of Jesus in both word and deed, as we are called to be light in the world. Reflect that God has that special purpose for each one of us that he's made special and put us in the unique situation that we live in. As we think of the Christmas season coming up, it's likely to present many of us with both opportunities and perhaps challenges to speak and certainly to live out being the light grace and love in our lives. And the second thing I want to say is, I think we should reflect on Paul's words that we have this treasure in jars of clay. We've looked at this amazing sweep of God's history of God's purposes, the riches of his being. We receive his light, but we have this light in clay vessels. And so we recognize that we're not perfect, that we have frailties, and we need not be too hard on ourselves. The really important thing is that God can use us just as we are. It's his power that's at work within us. We don't need to be perfect. Indeed, I think these verses show us that our vulnerability is actually part of our story, part of the story that we have to tell. That God wants to use us as we are to share that light, not to pretend that we're some golden fancy chandelier, but we have this light shining out from our real selves. And then this picture of the light being in a clay vessel uh, also reminds me that we don't generate the light from within ourselves. We contain and share that light because of the light that God shines into us. And we need to continue to receive his light so that our light doesn't grow dim and fade. I recently bought this um, solar light, uh, infrared sensor light, to put up over my dustbin. So when I go out in the dark with the rubbish, I can see that where I'm putting it. It needs the power of the sun's light shining on this bit here in order to give out light itself. But I discovered that the light of this lamp faded away really quickly. It became dim and dim and out. And that was because there wasn't a problem with the lamp. It was because where I put it, there wasn't enough light shining on the lamp, particularly on these gloomy winter days. It received very little light itself, and it just grew dim. It needs strong light in to give strong light out. And so for us too, There is a one-off thing that God brings us out of darkness into his kingdom of light and that he takes us as children of light. But to continue to be effective lights for him, lights in these clay vessels that we are, we need to continue to receive his light. In worship and word, in prayer and in fellowship, to wait on him, and to ensure we stay close in our relationship with him. Because God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has made his light to shine in our hearts, 
to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. I'm just going to suggest now that we have a prayerful time of quiet as we think about how we might respond to God's light. So just in the moments of quiet and a prayerful pose, First of all, I just want to say, if there's anybody out there who's never really received the light of Christ into their being, it's a moment now that you can take to come to him, to place your trust in him and ask for his light to shine into your heart. And for each of us, perhaps either to reflect in awe and wonder at what God has done for us, or to ask for the grace of his spirit to shine brighter in our hearts, that we can shine his love out, his light and his love in our lives. I'm going to finish by saying some prayerful words that we use at the start of our earlier nine o'clock service every week. They're really radical words, perhaps more radical than we pray at this service often. And I'll say them twice to give us a chance to reflect on them. May the light of your presence, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you. May the light of your presence, O oh Lord, set our hearts on fire with love for you. Amen. We got the chance to continue responding in worship now as we come to our next song. and We sing and pray that Jesus will be the center of our lives. Jesus, be the center. Uh, please stand as we sing this, unless you would prefer to remain seated.
Those of us here in the building, let's just take a seat. But let's every one of us remain in an attitude of prayer as we're still responding to what has been opened up to us this morning. Jesus, be the life. Jesus, be the light in my heart. Richard spoke of uh, us being clay jars and vulnerable and uh, the the children we're going to see now uh, helping us to pray uh, I think they you'll not agree they will they all feel look and feel vulnerable but let's not forget that God's God speaks to us in our vulnerable state God loves us we don't need to be superheroes as Richard said to pray to God God answers us from wherever we are whatever state we're in vulnerable or otherwise so let's uh, allow the children to pray for us and with us just now dear god thank you for jesus's birthday thank you um, for helping the and um, make putting the presents under the christmas tree and um, thank you for um helping Nana cook roast dinner um, for me and my family. Amen. Dear God, thank you for Christmas and all the things we do, like putting up a tree and decorations. Thank you for celebrating Jesus being born on Christmas Day. Amen. Thank you, God, for all the Christmas trees and baubles on top. Your son was born at Christmas, so we can celebrate, and he now loves us. Amen. Dear God, thank you for the Christmas we have. I have learned that people all around the world celebrate it. There are similarities about how we celebrate this special occasion and differences about it. I am grateful that you brought Jesus down to earth. Amen. Dear God, thank you for sending your wonderful son Jesus. He has lightened up the world. Thank you for helping us to remember your son. 
Christmas is wonderful. I love giving gifts to people like the shepherds and the wise men did. It makes me feel happy. When I receive gifts, it makes me feel super grateful. Amen. Dear God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you for sending your son to earth and, cele and the celebration of Christmas. Thank you for my Christmas tree that lights up my room at night. Thank you for my Christmas and my table with, thank you for my table with the lovely food. My thank you for my bed bec because I can't rest for the big day and my family because we have fun together. Amen. Dear God, I hope people in Ghana can get lots of shoes and pencils for school as well as presents <coughs> and food they like. Most importantly, they need hugs, kisses and love and they can see their friends. Hopefully we can get lots of white cold snow. It would be lovely. Amen. Dear God, we pray for the people of Ghana and other places like that so they should be so thankful for all the presents we get for Christmas and for all the snow we get. And I want to say a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Amen. Dear God, Christmas is celebrated in lots of different ways in different countries. And some countries like Ghana, the children just get things that they need and not proper presents because their parents can't afford it. Children should know how lucky they are in this country. Amen. Dear God, thank you for sending your son to earth and celebration of Christmas. Help us think about people celebrating Christmas in other countries. Thank you for the presents that make my day better and my health which keeps me warm and safe. Amen. Dear God, thank you for our differences in personalities. Please help us celebrate our different skills. Help us know who we are and stop the racism and bullying because of our differences. Help us love, love one another. Help us to love them. Help us to love themselves of who they are truly are. Let us celebrate and learn from each other. Bless the children around the world. Please help us come together as a family. Open up everyone's heart and show them the true meaning of Christmas. Christmas starts with Christ. Amen. Amen. Dear God, help us appreciate our differences and know that it is good to it is good to be different and unique. Thank you for letting us find out how we all celebrate Christmas in different ways. Let us celebrate Christmas in our own different ways. Let us appreciate others for who they are and not for our beliefs. Thank you for sending Jesus down to us on Christmas Day. For us, the Prince of Peace and Light of the World, although we celebrate this in different ways, but let us remember we all celebrate the same thing, the birth of Christ our Saviour. Help us remember Christmas as what it is, as the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And please let us share your, our tradition. Uh, we may have a different traditions, not only in different countries, but in different families. Help us remember what Christmas true, Christmas's true meaning is not present through decorations, Christmas trees, cards or new things. Simply Jesus, the day he was born, the saviour of the world. Amen. <coughs> Said. Amen. I must confess my, my aging ears didn't hear half of that. But uh, that's the point, isn't it? God heard every, every word. And God hears the cry of our hearts and the intent of our soul. Um, Jesus gave us a great prayer to pray to, didn't he? And so there may be some prayers on your, or some needs and fears that still are on your heart this morning. Why don't you try and wrap that into the prayer now that we'll all pray together. Uh, bring your need into the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen and amen. Well, it's lovely to be able to see you all this morning uh, online or in person here. And firstly, a huge thank you to all those kids from Christchurch School who were able to lead our intercessions this morning. And we had some wonderful services with them this week. Looking ahead to later on today, at 4.30 we have our carol service and at 6.30 as well. So please do book on, do come and join us but the 6.30 is also live streamed, so you're welcome to watch online at home if you would rather and join in that way. If you've got children between 3 and 11, or if you've got the grandkids staying with you, uh, we have join in on Tuesday in our halls where there is arts and crafts and other Christmas activities. So we'd love to be able to see you there. Do come, and uh, if you're not able to come, please do be praying. And then at the end of this week is Christmas Eve. And so at four o'clock is the children's special service. Again, you can book on online, or if you would like to, you can watch it, uh, watch it online as well. So you can book in to come here in person or watch online, four o'clock Christmas Eve. We also have at 11 o'clock Christmas Eve a quiet reflective communion. So if you want to be able to come and enjoy that space. And Christmas morning, we have a 10 o'clock service, which you're welcome to join us for. And there's also a pre-record uh, online as well. So again, you can watch from home. And the same on Boxing Day, 10 o'clock here gathered. Or if you would rather, there is an online service as well, pre-recorded, which you'll find on our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, or on our website. So we do hope that you have an amazing Christmas time and a great new year, and we look forward to seeing you at some point over the whole of this Christmas period, either online or in person. But let's finish this morning's worship by all joining together in our next song. So if you're in the building, let's just stand, and if you're at home, let's just lean into the Lord this morning to allow him to continue to minister to us this day.
fantastic Christmas hymn to get us in the mood for today's Christmas carol services. Again, you're welcome to join us in uh, any of those this afternoon, this evening. But let's finish now this service with the blessing. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord turn his face toward us and give us peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen.